Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Wesley Matthews, who's the co-founder of High Level Marketing. Wesley, welcome to the program. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hey, doing really, really good. I'm excited to talk to you because I love your story and what you've been able to accomplish, and I want to have the listeners kind of come with us through that journey. So give us a little bit of your background, and then let's dive into what your entrepreneurial journey has been. And, uh, you know, yeah, the result of it, that's wonderful, but I want to know kind of every step along the way what you were thinking of on the front end of it and then what you learned along the way. So uh, what's that journey been like for you so far? Yeah, for sure. So if I can remember back, you know, my early 20s, um, I didn't take the conventional route uh, through school. Like I barely passed high school. Just school was not my thing. So it took me six years to get through community college to get my two year associate's degree. I was just like, I have to get something because the world back then was like, you got to have a bachelor's degree. I was like, well, I'll figure it out with an associate's degree. I always had a feeling I'd kind of do something myself or operate my own business. Well, I went into the world of mortgages, um, you know, went from like not producing any loans to making the top producer list. But then I kind of looked in the mirror and said, I, I can't do this the rest of my life. You know, I'm young. Nobody's taking me serious. Um, and in that journey, I ended up moonlighting for a web development company here locally. I'm in Michigan and, um, you know, I was selling websites for this company. And it was kind of perfect because I was in my mid 20s. Everybody took me serious at that age, right? The internet just yep. kind of coming coming out. And I'm like, you know what? I, I really like technology. I like talking to businesses. This is great. However, the local company I work with, they blew up every deal I brought to the table. Uh, and I watched this company sort of w- run around with their head cut off, you know, chickens with their heads cut off. And I kind of thought to myself, like, there's a, there's got to be an easier way to do this because I just saw how frantic everything was. And I'm like, look, I told these guys, I said, look, like nobody cares about your company. It's my name. It's me. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm not going to jeopardize my relationships. Um, so I ended up uh, taking a developer from that organization and building my own platform. And uh, I kind of went about the world of just, I was able to figure out a way I could get companies ranked on Google, on search engines naturally. I uh, did that for a few years, and then the website demand just became overwhelming. People just wanted me to build their website. So I saw an opportunity. I had a vision of creating a company that would spit off reoccurring revenue. So you know, I was like, what could I do that it could impact every business? So I, I created a model of a, you know, charging a customer setup fee for website and SEO, and then having a monthly reoccurring revenue fee behind that. So yeah. essentially, that was the vision. You know, went out to do that 11 years ago, and you know, up until last year. Um, made an exit out of the organization. Well, I'm still in the organization, but we actually sold a large piece of that, partnered with an agency out of Alabama called Bell Media. We are operating as high-level marketing today. But, you know, that 11 years was really the launch platform to what we're about to do to the future. So in that entrepreneurial journey, ran that company as the entrepreneur, the CEO, the founder, um, and just really built a good business that was really effective in terms of website and digital marketing. Well, I would venture to say that when this... Um, alignment transaction, selling a portion of the company came about, if they viewed your your books, your processes, your standard operating procedures as um, like what you mentioned about the company you started off with as, you know, people running around the chickens with their head cut off, they would have gone like, hey, man, uh, thanks, but <laughs> no. Right. So they had to have right. seen systems and success and processes yep. and cookie cutter. And if we just do this and throw more mm-hmm. grease on the fire, very similar to what we see on Shark Tank, where it's like, you know what, you have yep. built a great business. All I need to do is come in and throw more grease on the fire. And now you're going. Yep. Whereas sometimes you see like, oh, that's a great idea. But man, you are so early. And you you accomplished this before the age of 40. So what I would ask of you is, man, between the age of 30 and 40, who did you and how did you align with the right methodologies and people and teachers and trainers and mentors so yep. that that got you in the position to be able to make that kind of a deal? For sure. So two two things stick out um, that changed my, my personal life and my business life uh, tremendously along the journey. One was, <clears throat> one and is, uh, EO, Entrepreneur Organization. Yep. So this is an organization made up of entrepreneurs. And, you know, there's a criteria that you have to qualify for to be 
to be part of the organization, which is do over a million dollars in revenue, be the founder of a company. So it's a group full of really successful entrepreneurs. That was a great support structure, uh, meeting with guys once a week to talk about personal family business, top 5%, bottom 5%. That's been a game changer. Because um, I think as an entrepreneur, it's lonely, right? I mean, you're at the top, you're trying to run a business. Um, you know, most people or friends went the traditional route to college or work in a corporation. Like, it's just different being an entrepreneur. Yeah. So the second thing that really helped me is because I'm a crazy entrepreneur. I'm a visionary. I'm not the most buttoned up process guy. Um, I hire people that are smarter than me that can build process and I have the vision. But what really helped with that is a platform called EOS. And that stands for the Entrepreneur Operating System. You'll find a lot of successful entrepreneurs running off that platform. And that just allowed me to architect the company and manage it in a way that just really made sense for me. That was really simple. So the gentleman who created this, his name's Gino Wickman. He's a local guy here in Michigan. The book's called Traction. That book changed my life. Um, and it just helped me be trans, you know, um, transparent in terms of running the organization and really get the culture and everybody bought in. So we were really fortunate that, you know, we have a very strong technology component. We were very strong on systems and processes to make this replicatable um, so yeah, those, those two, those two right there were critical. Yeah, I, I love that. And you have to, have to, have to have people and organizations that you align with. And even before, like if we could even drill in deeper on, okay, EO has those requirements and maybe someone one, two, three years in the business haven't met that requirement. What do you recommend someone to do to make, to maybe ascend and scale to that level to then get to the, the higher level? So would you recommend, sure. you know, uh, uh, mentors or, or, you know, masterminds, things like that? Yeah, for sure. So the one cool thing about EO, there's actually like the little brother of EO, which is called EOA. So the revenue requirement is much, much less. But yeah, yeah. to your point of a mentor, um, I think understanding as an entrepreneur what you're trying to accomplish and then finding somebody that's done that. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you can, I mean, obviously with Google and research, you can find pretty much anybody nowadays. Um, I would start being proactive. And if you see somebody or some company doing um, aspire, you know, aspiring to be what they're doing, you know, reach out. It's really easy to connect with people and you'd be shocked. I mean, I think a lot of people just are scared or fearful. But I think as an entrepreneur and kind of going through what I went through, nothing gives me more gratification than helping a fellow entrepreneur or helping them, somebody through an, you know, a challenge. Um, I actually appreciate that more than getting a large check. It's just giving back and just I love entrepreneurs and other entrepreneurs love giving back and helping and supporting. So, you know, just, just looking for, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? And again, unless you're trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, there's a lot of really successful people out there that are willing to help. Yes. And and I'm sure one question that comes to my mind kind of going over to uh, the marketing company that you founded and now are still a part of um, during your, you know, working with these groups and learning and, and iterating, one thing comes to my mind when you hear um, web design, when you hear SEO, when you hear online Google reviews, all those things, that almost is in many people's mind a commodity in the sense that I'm sure that business owners right now are getting emails and phone calls from India, Philippines. We can do this for three dollars an hour. How do you elevate yourself as a service company like what you have currently to be seen as more than just that commodity of how much do you charge for? And then they compare you, to, you know, price comparison. There has to be there had to have been a strategy to make sure that you're focused on value, not price. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? It's it's relationships and it's delivering ROI. So yeah. I took the approach with my organization, to your point, like 90% of all web and marketing agencies out there, right, like aren't delivering results. Everybody that I talk to in business, like they're frustrated with their marketing company. They're spending X. They don't feel they're getting value. So my mission was to set up something different where we're 100% transparent with the customer, letting them know in simple layman terms, like what you're spending and what we're doing and what the outcomes are. So we've built technology, predictable technology, and we have dedicated account managers who are almost more like consultants for the small businesses who really help educate them and show them the value. For example, the one thing we, we strive to do for all of our customers is figure out lead cost. So let's just say you're a plumber in, in the local market and we're able to get you leads for $100 a lead. Obviously, the goal is, you know, you're going to turn that lead into a $1,000, $2,000 job, correct? So we try to help the customer establish what that lead cost is. What that lead cost is, 
and, you know, just, just, you know, throttle it up and throttle it down. So obviously this takes time, but again, we're having full open, honest discussions with our customers. So we've built our business on, you know, one being found for search. So when people do Google search, you know, organic optimization services, digital marketing, that kind of thing. But I would say our number one lead source is word of mouth referrals, because if you deliver as a marketing company, trust me, that plumbing company is going to tell everybody and their brother, all of their business associations. Yeah. Um, everybody. And, and that's really what has helped us grow to, you know, $21 million in revenue um, last year. So, you know, it's we've got over 2000 clients and yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that, that's a masterclass in, if you just take that and chew on that for a little bit, that's massive because too many people just go, give me more and more and more. Let me sell, sell, sell. And I've, right. I'm, I've been a marketing consultant for 12 years. And I've said this over and over, sometimes the very best marketing is a job well done. And many times it is, oh man, it, this imploded and you're making this excuse and it was late and eh, I don't see the results and uh, I don't know. But when you can um, be that cons- cons- you know, consultative approach, you know, hey, we're here to help you. We're guiding yep. you. We're going to make you look like a rock star. And we're focused on when you do this, you get that. So here's some metrics and results and ROIs. That does stand out. And yeah, that plumber might not tell their competitor down the road, but guess who they're going to tell? Their buddy that's a right. chiropractor, their buddy that's a dentist, their attorney who, and now all of a sudden that word of mouth does spread and, and you know, the results speak for themselves. Is there anything that you recommend to amplify those word of mouth and referrals? Um, like you don't just sit back and wait for people to see a review on Google. Right. Um, what do you recommend that people use in their marketing to enhance the digital? Sure. Yeah, for sure. So a, a big part of it, if I understand you correctly, like it's it's actually getting that plumber right to engage with their customer base. Yes. So asking for the referral, right, and kind of having those conversations. So I think what's often missed in business, and there's there's a guy by the name of John Rulin who wrote a book, Giftology. Which Giftology, is really yeah, I love it. And and you know, I think that you know, investing in your client base, obviously, it's a lot. I kind of use the same and like it's cheaper to keep her. Like it's kind of a joke, like invest in your existing client base rather than chase down new business and yeah. make sure, you know, take your top customers and really maximize those relationships. And those are your best referral sources. So I think one of the hardest things to do is picking up the phone and making those contacts and, you know, investing in your existing client base for, for additional referrals. So I think oftentimes like the most traditional basic things just get missed. And, you know, what we've always been very successful with is going back to the basics and uh, just investing in our team, you know, because you invest in your staff and your team members, what happens, right? They take care of your customers. I mean, if your staff's happy, your customers are going to be happy. So all these pieces kind of fit together to make this ecosystem to make sure everything's going to work and go full steam ahead. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because when you mentioned John Rulin, I've interviewed him twice. And one of the things that stands out in my memory from his interview is, yeah, I'm the giftology guy. I teach you how to send great creative gifts to be remembered, but guess where you need to start? your own internal staff. Because if your internal staff feels like, oh man, Wes is out there sending gifts, these wonderful gifts to all the customers and (laughs) ignoring me. And and I remember, maybe this was, uh, I don't know, two, three years ago, but um, at the time, this is what he said, uh, um, an example of what he does. He goes, we uh, pay for a house cleaning service for all of our staff employees because he goes you know what they're busy they come home and once a week or whatever frequency now their house is cleaned and that's us taking care of them that's them appreciating us and then when it comes to answering the phone for our customers man that could kill a deal if you're just snippy with someone on the phone or in email or on social media so i think that that's a huge point you brought up there is all of those pieces have to be working together integrated yeah, for sure. I mean, I you know, nothing like coming home to a clean home and knowing that your employer took care of that. So yeah. there's a lot of creative ideas. You know, culture, culture is everything. And, you know, same thing with, uh, you know, your customers, right? I mean, everybody has good days, bad days, off days. You know, I just watched my son play the, a hockey game tournament over the weekend, and they had the best three games they played. They, they blew the championship game. Like, they didn't know uh, what they were doing. Yeah. So I think it's like, you know, from a from an employee and a customer perspective, if you can be – clear in your communication. And this is what really helped with EOS. So I think as a CEO, as a visionary, as an entrepreneur, like sometimes I I question why people don't understand what's going in my mind. And until I can actually transfer that in writing and kind of put it into, you know, form where where somebody could understand, that's when things started to click. So 
as I ran my company for the first three or four years, like nobody knew where I was going or what we were doing as an organization. As soon as I could be transparent, then they were able to kind of take that information. We had great dialogue around it. And now it's like really clear when there's client communication, internal communication, we're all kind of rowing in the same direction, headed toward that North Star. Again, you know, that book can completely change my entrepreneurial career. Yeah, I love it. Um, you, so let's let's uh, kind of wrap up with this this question or this uh, series of, of thoughts here. So let's say that, that uh, there's an entrepreneur listening in and they're going, you know what? One of these days I would love to exit, right. but not exit and drop the mic, exit like Wes did and sell X percent of the company to have that cash flow yeah. and still be part of the world. And you know, I'm not ready to retire on the beaches of whatever, but that right. means that there needs to be some really good structure and planning involved and not just, you know, throwing up the for sale sign or whatever. What right. is one or two things that you would recommend someone on the front end, you know, even years before <clears throat> making that decision, yeah. they should be paying attention to? You know, for me, simple, start with the end in mind. What do you want? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what are you trying to accomplish? Because what worked for me may not work for others, yeah. right? I think what, what HLM did, we partnered with a very strategic, like-minded company. And that's exactly right. Like we had two executives, they had two executives coming together into one agency, allowed us to have tremendous savings from an expenditure perspective. Um, it took me out of the day to, you know, the, the day to day and the fiduciary responsibility of the organization. And not to mention, I created an entrepreneurial company that was ready to make the next level to be professionally managed. So I had to look myself in the mirror and have some hard conversations between my own ears and say, I don't think I'm the guy to take it to the next level. I did a hell of a job getting into six and a half million in revenue, but in order to kind of get to the next level, I need additional resources and help. And I found the right guys that I felt very comfortable with to complete that puzzle piece. So when I did what I did, I had about 45 team members. Uh, today, we're nine months post-transaction. We're about 110 team members uh, working really hard on alignment. So for me, it was by design. And I yeah. did that because I, I started with the end in mind. And the analogy of, I remember I bought a Jeep maybe like 12 years ago. And up until that day, I never realized how many Jeeps there were on the road. So when mm -hmm. I drove home, I was like, holy cow, I saw like 40 Jeeps on the road. I told my wife and she's like, okay, what does that mean? But what I, what I say that analogy is like, when you look with the end in mind, you start to now identify things you need to do to get there. Yeah. And if there isn't clarity around that, then, then you're in for a wild ride. Cause it's a wild you, ride, even knowing what you want, yes. but not knowing what you want and going through it is, is it would be really Ooh, Yes. Um, other, it's kind of like, Hey, Hey, hun, kids, jump in the car. We're going to go on vacation. Okay, cool. Where are we going? I don't know. We're just going to go. No, you need to know where you're going. Right. And what you described right. about the Jeep, do you realize that that is a perfect description of the reticular activator in our brains? Yep. So that's, I mean, it's, it, and you know what? A lot of people would go, oh, that's law of attraction. Well, law of attraction and positive thinking works. It's just not the frou-frou new age um, thing that people can just sit there and go, let me manifest this. But guess what happens when you start thinking with the end in mind and you start going, okay, if I want to be here in this many years, that means in you know a few years before that, I need to be at this level, which means in a few, which means this month I need to be doing well, it might not come to fruition yet because you might be looking a month to a quarter out. But now all of a sudden you're like, okay, I, I need to watch for that strategic partner who – I need to watch for that opportunity where – and you start – it starts staying in the forefront of your yeah. mind because you're a reticular activator. An actual part of our brain is kicking in. And all those are truths. I mean, begin with the end of mind. We've heard that from Stephen Covey in, in his book, Seven Habits. And so that's awesome. It's just what's easy to do is easy not to do. And so let okay, these exactly. kind of tips and points that we've talked about today sink in, re-listen to this um, interview and uh, take notes um, and, and put them into action because knowledge is power is a false statement. Knowledge is potential power. You've got to put that right. knowledge into action. action, right? Awesome. Well, I, lo yep. I love uh, your approach, Wes. What's, um, what's the best way people can uh, reach out and learn more about High Level? So obviously, you can go to the website, uh, highlevelmarketing.com. A lot of great information in terms of uh, you know entrepreneurial, web design, digital marketing, that kind of thing. To reach out to me personally, probably the easiest way is just find me on LinkedIn, Wesley Matthews. Matthew's spelled with one tweet T. And like I said, I love when entrepreneurs reach out and I love to experience share. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate the opportunity. Perfect. Well, Wesley, thanks so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure. Thanks. Appreciate it.
You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.